Take your Bible, turn to Psalm 139. You just be glad I hadn't talked about UFOs yet. I'm not, I, listen, I'm not kidding you. I, uh, a church down in Fort Smith, Arkansas asked me to come down. Pastor asked me to talk about UFOs, and I did. I got presentations on them. And um, so I'm just, I'm just giving it out like I'm giving this to you. And uh, I got done. I walked down. I said, well, I don't really think there's much of an altar call after a teaching on UFOs. I sat down, and one lady come down running to the altar crying and giving her life back over to the Lord. That night, it actually had to do with what I had been talking about that night. Because she saw something years ago. Thank you for saying right. You want to see me sweat? Ask me about UFOs. I'll start sweating. <laughs> Let me just say this concerning that topic. Ask yourself the question... Does God have chariots? Does he have chariots? What are they made of? They're made of angels. They're made of angels. Okay? I'll roll on. Psalm 139.16. Years, years ago I met a, uh, an ER doctor. Very smart man. I love him. Chuck Thurston, he's the guy that presented to me the idea that every cell in our body is a picture of the wilderness tabernacle. And I, I did. I, I, I said it backwards. I said, wow. So, <laughs> anyway, once I had that in my mind, I'm like, oh. man, I just went running with it. Psalm 139, 3,000 years ago, David wrote this. Everything we know about DNA is about 70 years old. Most of what we know about DNA is about 20 years old. David wrote this 3,000 years ago by inspiration of God. Thine eyes did see my substance yet being unperfect. And in thy book, here's the book right here. This is the book. Okay? And I want you to think of the word book. If you can think of a verse that has the word book in it, raise your hand while I'm talking and I'll let you give me the verse. Okay. Yeah. Huh? What, which says? The book of life. Okay? In thy book, all my members were written, which in continuance was fashioned, were fashioned, when as yet there were none of them. And I went, that's DNA. That is deoxyribonucleic acid. Look, look at it like this. In thy book, all my members were written. Every member of your body, your fingers, uh, your smelly armpits, your elbows, uh, your eyes, your toes, your lips, uh, my former gallbladder. Okay? Everything was written in a book. And everything was written to be a certain way. I mean, if you notice, I've got a picture of the elbow up there. Notice the el your elbow skin is like an elephant, right? It's ugly. Nobody, no guy looks at a girl's elbows. <laughs> right? But the elbow skin serves a purpose. It has to be thick and doesn't have a lot of nerves in it because it operates a forklift. <laughs> right? <laughs> now, take... Take your arm like this and just right here, pinch yourself, right here. Oh, that hurts, doesn't it? See, that's real soft, isn't it? The book said that this was going to be, some of you guys and ladies out there, you're tough. You're a hard breed, okay? God didn't make me that way. I'm this right here, okay? You touch me a little bit, say a little bit about me, and I hurt, okay? I run off crying, oh, but, but let me tell you what this is designed for. In the, in the winter time, we stand around like this, don't we? What are we doing? We are holding, see that the skin is thin to allow the transfer of heat. And in the summertime, we walk around like this, don't we? 
Why? To let the wind blow through and across the veins in our arm to cool our blood. Some of us are just made for comfort. Amen? Amen. You softies out there, let's unite. <laughs> but let's just don't tell anybody, okay? God makes us all different as a different part of the body, but it's all the same DNA. All the same. Look at this one. In thy book, all my members were written. Moses helped write the Bible. Elijah gave words for the word of God. John the Baptist, Paul, John, David, some 40 different, I hate to say it, men. Wrote the word of God. Holy men spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And it is something that over some 4,000 years, 40 different men all writing the exact same code for the word of God. It is something. So look at it this way. In thy book. DNA. All my members were written. Look at that. Man and a woman. And the members of their body. Husbands, that's your body. Is it not? It's not your wife and your children. Your body? You don't leave your body? You don't go running out on your body? You don't abuse your body? You care for it. Amen? You, you be gentle with it. I had surgery. Don't touch me. Okay? All my members were written. Look at this. Look at this. Which in continuance was fashioned. When as yet there were none of them. When you were conceived in your mother's womb, you were a circle with a bunch of data in it. You had no arms, legs, hair. Some of you still don't. I mean, if it falls here, that's okay. But you had none of those. So not only is DNA written like a book, it's a book of prophecy. Because it foretells what is going to happen. At some point, the cells, this is called cell differentiation. All the cells are alike for a few days. And then at some point, some of the cells, you look in the book of Acts and see the same thing happening. All of the saints were in Jerusalem all at once and they had all things common, didn't they? But then some of them broke off. And there began to be little differences between this group and that group. Why? Because God was going to do something different with this group than this group here. Yeah, that's right. And so all of a sudden this group broke off and then another group broke off. And this group over here all of a sudden started forming little, little uh, cells that started jumping. And then they formed a heart. Don't kill that. Doctors, doctors don't kill that. Doctors are supposed to save life. Amen. And by the way, this argument about the woman saying, it's my body, my choice. Wrong. Amen. It's not your DNA in there. That child has his own unique DNA that is different from yours. It doesn't belong to you. Amen. Now watch this. In thy book. All my members were written. Amen. Whether they were written in Kenya. Oh, I love Kenya. Help us pray for Kenya. They're starving to death. And right now we don't have the money to feed them. Help us pray, okay? But they're members over there. And they're members in all over the world. You've been to Russia. There's members over there. There's members in the Philippines. There's members... There's even members in, God forbid, Iowa. <laughs> I met this evangelist and his dear wife at McDonald's this morning. They just looked like they were headed to church. So we sat down by him. And boy, he was so nice to me. I just noticed that he didn't buy my breakfast. So <laughs> anyway, all my members were written, which in continuance, because there's still people being saved in there. Yeah. Amen. 
All, all the members aren't here yet. The child is not ready to be born yet. It's not time. The fullness of the Gentiles must come in. Amen? Then when all the members... I would love to be standing there when the last Gentile gets saved. Hey, we're going. Let's go. When the last member comes in, then what the body will be together, will be complete. But don't forget, there are still people needing to be saved by the DNA. Amen. When as yet there was none of them. Day of Pentecost. Now, God said, take this book of the law and put it in the side of the Ark of the Covenant. Put it inside the Ark of the Covenant of your God that it may be there for a witness against thee. So let me show you a diagram here. This is, this is the cell. Uh-oh. This is the human cell, and over here is the human cell. They're the same. Here is the cell membrane or cell wall, depending on if you're a plant or an animal. And can just anything go in here? No. No, no, no. So it keeps things out that are not supposed to be in. See, God is a divisive God. He is. You either get on his side or get out, okay? But anyway, right here is what's called the mitochondria. The mitochondria is called the power plant of the cell. Because the reason why I'm sweating so much is because my cells right now are burning sugar. Sugar burns, doesn't it? My body takes everything that I eat and converts it to sugar. The sugar then is burnt in the mitochondria, the altar. They burnt every sacrifice that came in. Okay. What happens when you burn sugar? You have something left over, don't you? What is it? It's carbon. And the carbon has to be taken out. So every time I breathe out, what am I breathing out? Isn't that something? That God even had a... I won't get into that. That's the blood thing. Anyway, mitochondria, that's the altar. Here is the cell nucleus. We have the, we have the holy place. And then we have the most holy place. The Bible doesn't say holy of holies. It says most holy place. Isn't that interesting that in the cell, you have the nucleus. And then inside the nucleus, you have the nucleola. A different place. And in the nucleola, the book of DNA is stored just like in the sanctuary, in the most holy place. The book of the law was kept in the Ark of the Covenant in the most holy place. Isn't that something? You are the tabernacle of God. Every cell in your body says that you're the tabernacle of God. You're the dwelling place of the most high God. Say amen. Amen. Take the roll of a book and write therein all the words that I have spoken unto thee. Now, let me show you this. It's called deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA. Packaged in 46 chromosomes. Chromo means color. And they gave it that word because they noticed that these chromosomes received dye efficiently. And that's how they could spot it when they're looking in the microscope. Um... When, when God said in Genesis 9 that he's going to send the cloud over the land, what was he going to put in the cloud? Genesis 9, after the flood. The cloud. The bow. Thank you for waking up. The bow in the cloud. Multicolors. What did uh, Joseph receive from his father? Glory of the Lord. Okay. Placed inside the nucleus, the most holy place, in the tabernacle now. Let me go back here. This is important. Because we're going to get into masonry here in a minute. This ties into it. See this tabernacle here. This right here. God said put 20 boards down the north side. 20 boards down the south side. Six boards across the back. 
Now there were two corner boards that were holding it all together. But you have 20 plus 20 plus 6. What is that? So you have 46 boards containing the book that God wrote. Amen? You get that? Okay. So you have 46 chromosomes that hold the book that God wrote for you. Amen. It's rolled up in a, in a helix. What did they do with that, with that book that Moses wrote? What has to happen before it can be read? In DNA, when let's say, okay, I've got a wound in my body. The doctor, the surgeon knows that when he clamps that off, that over time, my body will manufacture the things that will close up that wound. Whatever it is, okay, whatever part of my guts is there, my body will make enough gut material to close up this hole in my gut. You got that? Okay. How does it do that? Is there a storage place of gut material in my body somewhere? Do I eat guts and it makes guts out of guts? No. The DNA, there's a machine called RNA polymerase. Write that down. RNA polymerase reads the scroll and it finds the place where it's written the recipe and the blueprint to make the gut material for my body. It then opens up, unrolls the book. You remember when Jesus went into the synagogue? And they gave him what? What book? How, has, how many chapters? 66 chapters. And he opened the book. Because he alone is worthy to open the book and to read it. Amen. Amen. But he didn't read the whole thing, did he? Nope. My body doesn't need to make hands to put here. Thank God. <laughs> when, we, when we lead somebody to the Lord, we don't read them the whole Bible, do we? We go, okay, Romans 3, 23, Romans 6, 23, 1 John 1, 9, Romans 10, 9 and 10, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, John 3, 16. And we, we give them those scriptures to, to conceive them, to add them as members of the body of Jesus Christ. And then they get this and they start growing. Amen. Amen. Mm. The two spines are made of sugar and phosphorus, linked together by four. Now, everybody, want, I want everybody to do this. Take your Bible. Hang on, I'll show you what I want here. I want you to take the first page of Matthew. And the last page of John. There we go. Like that. And like that. Okay? Everybody do this with your Bible. Now, this is what you see up on the screen behind me. Here's the two spines, the Old Testament and the New Covenant, New, New Testament. And what binds them all together is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Amen. And the coding of your DNA, it's like, it's sort of like um, Morse code or binary, zeros and ones. It, the coding of it depends on the combination of the four bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine. And that's how it codes for what it needs. And I don't want to explain it any more than that, but it looks exactly like this. Where is the Word of God? It showed up right here. All the coding for the rest of the Bible is right here in the four Gospels. In fact, the fourth book 
of the Gospels. John said it like this, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Okay, so your DNA matches this exactly. Okay, now, what else I want to show you? Got that, got that, got that. Adenine, by the way, adenine can only link with thymine. Remember binary? Plumbing, electricity. A male cord can only go to a female cord. That's right. Amen. There are no non-binary cords. <laughs> There's no non-binary plumbing. That's right. Okay, it's stupid. But adenine only links with thymine and guanine only links with cytosine. So when the DNA unrolls itself to be read, you're going to like this. It takes what it needs and cuts it off, half of it, that's RNA, but it has all the code there, C, G, T, A, A, T, C, G, G, T, C, it has it, all that code there, and it does what's called RNA transcription. That means it makes a copy, Brother Edge, of the original. Adam is the original manuscript. Is he not? All of us are copies. That's right. <laughs> you take what's unique in every human being on the planet right now and put them all together. You got Adam. Amen. Because in him was all of life. That's right. He is the original. Now, do we have the original manuscript? Adam's dead, isn't he? Yeah. What do we have? Copies. So when the when the R when it cuts it off. It makes a copy of it. That's called RNA transcription. It has to make a perfect copy of it. If it doesn't make a perfect copy of it, it's useless. It gets rid of it. Or something goes wrong and it forms cancer. And something goes bad, doesn't it? Okay? That's what all these new Bibles are. They're cancer. Okay? Then, that's called RNA transcription. Once it's copied, then it has to go through the process called RNA translation. Reg, translation. So that a machine reads the code and starts taking proteins out of your body and putting them together and folding them in a certain way like origami and then putting it where it belongs in your body. And the DNA rolls itself back up. Again, it's got the original copy right there, preserved. Did you know what your, your DNA gets corrupted over 10,000 times a day, every day? Pollutants in the air, sunlight, things like that. And your body has a way of correcting the corruptions because it always has the original to compare it with. Amen! Amen! Yeah, it makes sense, doesn't it? Listen, God is God. It does it this way here. He does it this way here. So it's like Morse code. So let's say that a combination of three of these base pairs, like adenine, cytosine, and thymine, would make an amino acid. Amino acid is like a letter of the alphabet, like the letter B. So let's say we're going to make a word. We're going to make uh, a word or a sentence or a verse or a whole chapter or something like that, then we would take these three are one, by the way. These three are one. Amen. 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 So that's how you get the letters of the genetic information for your body to make what it is that you need. There are 22 amino acids. There are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. Read Psalm 119. They're all there. God not only wrote it, he wrote it in Hebrew. 22 letters, 22 amino acid letters that make the words, that make the letters and the words and the chapters and the verse. There's even periods at the end of sentences. It's called stop DNA. They read it 
Scientists are blown away by this because they thought it would be like a jumbled mess of junk. And they were like going, no, this is like organized like a book. Yeah. Look at here. You see this code? It keeps repeating itself. Here's a gene here. Here's a gene here. Here's a gene here. This is called stop DNA. This is called start DNA or stop codon and a start codon. It tells you when this verse ends and this verse begins. So DNA equals the scroll, the book. Uh, base pairs already showed you that. The structure, sugar phosphate. Uh, it's made of sugar. How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yeah. Hey, sweeter than honey to my mouth. The entrance of that phosphorus, phosphate, phosphorus, light. What are tracer rounds? What do you dip them in? Phosphorus. So they light up. The entrance of thy words giveth light literally in your body. Every time your DNA is red, it's giving your body light and sweetness. Amen. It giveth understanding. See, hillbillies understand this now. Amen. 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 You cowboys, smarter than all the guys at Harvard now. <laughs> Amen. I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, it been, and my belly was better. And he said, thou must prophesy again before many peoples, nations, tongues, and languages. Or kings, four. Just like the gospels, four. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now watch this. The first time the word book is mentioned in the King James Bible is in Genesis 5. This is the book of the generations of Adam. And the Bible says, for as an Adam, all die. That's the Old Testament. The new Adam, the second Adam, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Adam lived 930 years. In the 930th chapter of the Bible is Matthew 1.1, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ. Well, I don't believe the chapters and verses were inspired by God. I believe we came from monkeys too. Okay. Uh, the four Gospels are the four base pairs, adding guanine. Side. By the way, out of these four, three of them are similar. One of them's different. If I were to say to you, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which one of those is different than the other three? John. Everybody said John. Why? Because the synoptic Gospels are Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Yeah. Now I'm going to name four other things. Leah, Rachel, Billa, and Zilpah. Which one's different out of the four? Rachel. Shem, Ham, Japheth, Noah. Noah. Um, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Daniel. Daniel. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, the Son of God. You show me four things in the Bible. What, one of them's different. And thymine's different than the other three base pairs. Okay? God does everything in order. Okay? Uh, this is how people are saved. Okay? Um, the cell divides in a copy of the original DNA. Remember the rules? Adenine only links with... So, thymine and cytosine only links with guanine. So when you, un, so when you rightly divide it, when you rightly divide it, and you only have half of the code, it automatically knows if it's adenine here, what's it going to be here? Thymine. If it's guanine here, what's it going to be here? Cytosine. It automatically knows how to rebuild the rest of it because... There is no difference between this half of the Bible and this half of the Bible. If you read this one, you're reading this one. And if you're reading this one, you're reading this one. Amen. Amen. That's your pastor. I heard him testify. He didn't go to seminary. When God called him to preach, he didn't go to Bible college. He just started reading the Bible. And he said he noticed that as he's reading the New Testament, he could see things from the Old Testament in the New Testament. Things from the New Testament in the Old Testament. That's right. And that's how it's done. And by the way, oh, you're going like this. Let me see if I can get a picture of it here. 
Yeah, let me, I'm going to move here for a minute. One of the single strands is called a five prime. Don't ask me why. The other side is called a three prime. Don't ask me why. But they're read differently. It's the same DNA, same code. But if this strand is red, it's red like from left or right to left. And if this strand is red, it's red from left to right. The Old Testament was written in what? Red from right to left. The New Testament written in red from Seek you, out the, seek you out the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. So when it's rightly divided, it can automatically be put back together again exactly the way it was because none shall want her mate. And like I say, when you're reading about a lamb, that, that AI freaks me out because the AI knew that the Lamb of the Old Testament was the Lamb of the New Testament. That freaks me out. I mean, I don't use that chat GPT very much. I used it today for an example, and that's it. It freaks me out. There's something about it that just like, ugh. Okay? Uh, oh, none shall want her mate. So, like in Exodus, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. In the New Testament, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Those are mated together. In the Old Testament, he is, uh, David slew both the lion and the bear, which was Goliath. Goliath is guess who? And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth is the mouth of a lion. Who is David fighting in the Old Testament? The beast. Okay? You get it now? They're mated together. Oh, I like this. Take, get your Bible out. Get your Bible out. If any of you are tired, come stand next to me and hold me up, all right? They called, when they called to uh, schedule this surgery, uh, I scheduled it uh, to not miss this. I did. I wanted to be here. I appreciate Brother Reg and this church. You guys are my friends. Um, you, ought to let me, you ought to let me come down here and, and tell you what I know about UFOs. Okay? I'm not telling... Don't, don't put pressure on Red. Don't, don't say, Mike said so. I got great respect for this man because he shoots. So do I. So don't put pressure on him. If he says no, the Holy Ghost told him no, okay? Um, just watch the video behind his back, all right? <laughs> By the way, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm banned on YouTube again. They struck my channel again. I said five words, Reg. I said five words about the election in 2021, and they struck my channel and I can't upload anything for, I thought it was a week, apparently it's a month now. I am not, that's censorship. That is censorship. And censorship is always the sign of a weak position. If your position is strong enough to, to withstand criticism, you don't mind criticism, okay? Now, look at your Bible, Genesis 2. And if you want to, count these words, and Adam said, Count those words. This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. 
How many words did you count? 46. 46. Look and look at the verse. The verse is describing this. The two literally become one flesh. The man contributes 23 chromosomes. The woman contributes 23 chromosomes. So the one flesh now has 46, just like father and mother. Amen. Amen. King James Bible. Amen. King James Bible. Amen. I couldn't believe it. I was like, there ain't no way. There ain't no way there's 46 words there. And there is. And there's others too. I might get to that. So, DNA is the word of God in the Bible. You'll find, you won't find the word DNA in the Bible. You won't find deoxyribonucleic acid in the Bible. You won't find RNA polymerase in the Bible. You will find the Word of God, which is that phrase. Let me show you this. If you don't have this software, get it. Get it. Let me show you this. This is what got me going on numbers in the Bible. Word, word of God. It's mentioned exactly 49 times. That's 7 times 7. And I looked at that and I went, that's nuts. That's perfection. How can that be? And that's what got me going on counting things in the Bible. And all I had to do was think of like what the number meant and what words might be associated with it. And I'm like blown away. The, the name Jesus Christ, 196 times, that's seven times seven times four. The phrase son of man, 196 times, seven times seven times four. The word book or books, 196 times, 7 times 7 times 4. Jesus is the book, by the way. Amen. This software is free. Okay, get it, download it. works on Mac, it works on Linux, works on Windows. Okay, uh, we don't have an iPhone equivalent, but um, it works. Uh, PureBibleSearch.com, I think, is the website. But anyway, book or seed. So... Now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Amen? Amen? So you take that parable now, and you can apply it both to, like, evangelism. I think this is the story of uh, the, uh, the seed and the sower. And you have four groups of people there. Four. How many Gospels are there? Four. And out of those four groups, one of them is different than the other three. Because one of them goes to heaven. The other three don't. The wayside, the stony ground, the thorny ground, they do not produce fruit. And when you don't produce fruit, you're cut off, cast into the fire. The fourth group is different. They're sown on good ground. Okay? And you can take that and apply that in whatever area of life DNA works in. Acts 12, but the word of God grew and multiplied. Let me ask you a question. What makes the body work? What mechanism in your body makes everything work? What one mechanism in your body governs and regulates everything in your body? No, not the blood. The DNA. Everything in my body is determined by what's in my book. I'm 6'3", because my book said I'm going to be 6'3". Okay? And you're 5'8", because your book has few less chapters in it than mine does. Okay? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay? But your whole body is regulated by one thing. It's not the mind. It's not the heart. It's the book of DNA. It determines everything. So what makes a baby grow in the womb? The book does. What makes a saint grow in the Lord? The book. And only the book. Don't buy them, don't buy them um, uh, books out of the Christian. I'm trying to think of stupid authors. Don't buy Joyce Myers. Don't buy Kenneth Copeland books. Don't buy John MacArthur books. 
Buy a Bible, King James Bible. Okay? And the Word of God increased. What makes, what, what made, you were talking, Brother Ed, you were talking about how God was moving in the young people in this church. What is moving them? The book. The Word of God is moving them. They're reading verses or hearing verses in sermons and they're going, man, and the Holy Ghost is working that in their life. And all of a sudden, boom, good fruit's coming out of them. You're going, that ain't my son. Amen. He must be a child of God. Amen. Uh, being born again. Now watch this. In this verse, there are two things born again. One is born again of corruptible seed. The other one is born again of incorruptible seed. Now, think of a parable in the Bible that deals with seed. Turn to Matthew 13. Matthew 13, in fact, Matthew 13 is full of parables about seed, about DNA. Full of them. Okay? So, we have the parable of the wheat and the tares, don't we? And I've used this before. I think I've used it here. I, I would put two pictures on the screen. One of them would be of green wheat and the other would be of green tares. And I would ask people, can you tell me the difference? If your life depended on it, could you tell me while they're green, which one is wheat and which one is tares? It's not easy to do. So this is why the husbandman said to the, to the servants, don't, don't go and pull them out now because you might pull out wheat, the good stuff that I want. Okay, that's, and the, the wheat are the children of the kingdom. That's us, the saints, okay? The, the other one are the tares. They are the child of the devil, sons of Belial. Okay, they, they, are, they are children of the evil one. Okay, they... Turn to Genesis 3. Yes, see this. Am I boring you? No. Let's count the words that Satan spoke to Eve. In verse 1, he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said... Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. That's 14, right? No? 14? Okay. Now verse 3. No, verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman. We're at 14. Ye shall not surely die. Now we're at 19. For God doth know that in the day ye eat. There, uh, thereof, that's one word, then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. It's 46 words. Exactly. That he spoke to her. What did he do? He poisoned her. He poisoned her. With what? Corrupt words. Evil communications. Corrupt good manners, don't they? So, back in Matthew 13, in the parable of the wheat and the tares, you have the children of the evil one, children of the wicked one, children of Satan, children of Belial, sons of Belial, ye child, thou child of the devil, uh, ye generation of vipers. All of those phrases are literal. Now I'm going to ask you a $1 million question. Do angels, bad and good, have DNA. Yes. You think about it. Okay? And I'm going to take you there. Notice that in the weed and the tares, while they're both green, they're indiscernible. Right, right now, it's not so easy to tell who's saved, who's not saved. You can't look in somebody's heart and know their heart. Okay? And so we can't just go around, well, they go to that church over there, so I know they're lost. Or they go to that church over there, I know they're lost. We can't do that. Right, right. And we shouldn't do it. It's not, it's not our job. The master said, wait. Amen. 
So what, something's going to happen. There's going to be a transformation take place. Remember how I said earlier, the machine wants to connect to the human. Okay, it's called a symbiosis. And a symbiosis is like this. One species has to live off of another species, but that species that it's living off of needs the other species to live in and of itself. They need each other to live. Okay? So how is it that a computer needs us to live? I don't think we can, I can't understand it yet, but that's part of what's going to happen. Okay? Part of it. Now, when, how does, how do the servants know that it's time to harvest and to collect the tares first and then the wheat? How do they know it? The tares turn black. Okay? Not like black, black, not like, okay? But they, they turn black. Evil. Darkness. Children of darkness. Right? The wheat also transforms to look like the color of the sun because we're in the image of Christ now you see that one of these days there's a transformation coming that's what a harvest is how do you know when apples are ripe how do you know when strawberries are ripe ready how do you know when tomatoes are ready they're green they're green they're green oh look they're fixing to change. Now they're red. Now they're ready. A transformation took place and now you know it's harvest time for that tomato. You following me? There is coming a transformation of every human being on this planet, saved and lost. We are a separation. We are going to be saved and changed and transformed into His image. And the lost are going to be born again of corruptible seed. That means their DNA, something is going to be added to their DNA. We're born again of incorruptible seed. That's why I have to believe that my Bible is right in everything it says. Because if it's wrong, then I'm not born again. It can't be. It can't be. So holding forth the word of life. First uh, John 1, 1, 1, the, oh, I like this, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled. John said before there was ever a printed Bible that we would be holding the word of life in our hands. He was right, wasn't he? Amen. Amen. It's the word of life. That's what DNA is. If without DNA, there's no life. Rocks don't have DNA. Rocks don't have DNA, okay? In thy book, oh, I like this. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. So we're not supposed to add anything like the Book of Mormon or the uh, Pope's words. Or Mary, I'm doing research on Mary. <sighs> Mary and apparitions, she's wicked. She's a whore. Yes. Woo! If any, man, if, if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Don't take any words out. Don't add any words to it. Amen. That also applies to your DNA. Okay, now here's what Ray Kurzweil, he's, he works for Google, he's in charge of their, he's one of their visionaries looking into the future. He said, I still have this biological body and it's actually a biological body with some genes that are undesirable. Yeah, I have some of those genes. I have things I don't want in me. No good things in me. But one of these days, God's going to take away this vile body. He is. And he's so, Ray Kurzweil said, I've been struggling with that all my life, and I'm actually in a very good place. You know why? Because he believes, he predicted, Time Magazine put this out. He predicted that by 20, was it 2046, 2049, something like that, the year man becomes immortal. Immortality. Never dying, always living, and it won't be by salvation, 
because they hate the cross, don't they? Isn't that what we read at the very beginning of this? They hate the cross. So they're going to do it a different way. This was what I was looking for. This was written in 1960. Man-computer symbiosis. Man-computer symbiosis is an expected development in cooperative interaction between men and electronic computers. It will involve very close coupling between the human and the electronic members of the partnership. The main aims are to let computers facilitate formulative thinking as they now facilitate the solution of formulated problems and two, to enable men and computers to cooperate in making decisions and controlling complex situations. And on and on. this was written in 1960. And it's coming to pass now, in our lifetime, probably. I won't read all of that. National Geographic, Israeli scientists have devised a computer that can perform 330 trillion operations per second, more than 100,000 times the speed of the fastest PC. How are they able to do that? They're able now to use DNA as a hard drive. They can take DNA rewrite the code because basically DNA is written in binary. Switches on and off. It's written in binary and they're able to store t thousands of terabytes of information on DNA so small that you can't even see it. So if they're able to do that, are they able to change and alter the DNA? Now, let me, let me say something to you, to you uh, internet warriors. Stop being afraid of every story that comes out, some clown claiming that this and this and this is going to alter your DNA and you're going to be doomed forever. Are you not saved? Amen. Are you not born again? Amen. Is your God not a shield to you? Did he not say that you'd be able to trample upon scorpions and serpents? And that no harm would come to you. Did he not say that? Yes. Stop being afraid of everything on the internet. Because most of it's made up. Amen. Take my hat if you need it, alright? <laughs> While the head of research team... Finn Zang cautions that it's not a silver bullet and more testing will need to be done before applying the new technology to humans. It's likely that other more ambitious and perhaps incautious scientists will see things differently. Chinese scientists have already demonstrated a willingness to go off reservation and experiment with CRISPR on human embryo. CRISPR, I don't have time to explain it, but CRISPR basically is altering the, ge the genetic code of any species whatsoever. It used to be really hard to do it. Now it's super, super easy. It's super cheap. It's almost, it's almost to the point that kids in their basement, next to their Iron Man posters, can alter the genetics of some little thing or whatever in, in a microscope. It's almost that easy now. Deuteronomy 8, he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. And so when you take a word out of man's genetics, yeah. it's death. Right. It's death. <laughs> this company called Illumina. Invest in CRISPR platform. CRISPR is everywhere now. And there, there will be no nation able to stop it. In fact, it'll get to a point to where your doctor will recommend it. And if you deny it, they cut off your health insurance. British scientists granted permission to genetically modify human embryos. Can you turbocharge your genes to produce designer babies? Geneticists are concerned transhumanists will use CRISPR on themselves. They already have. Yeah. I won't read all of this. The word was God. The word was... Uh, I don't have time to get into all that. This is how they basically changes in the Bible. It's moving into the church now. DNA of a dangerous church. I wouldn't go to that church. But that's one of them hip-hop churches. Where they play the rock music, turn off all the lights, 
in the sanctuary, so everybody's in darkness. Changing the DNA of a church. That's all you got to do is take the King James out and give them all NIVs. You, listen, this is the DNA of this church. And this church, your church is different than my church. We have a different ministry. We have a different way. We have different people. But we use the same DNA. And God has us doing this. God has you guys doing that. And, and this is the DNA. This is, uh, I asked you the question, can angels have DNA? God does. Yep. Are you not sons of God? Amen. Are you not born of that which is born of God? Sinneth not, the Bible says. Uh, is, is it science fiction to change the DNA of your church? Healthy church DNA. Church 3.0. How do you change the DNA of your church to make it evangelistic? How do I change DNA of our church? This, Brother Reg, was presented to the Free Will Baptist denomination several years ago in one of their big meetings. I warned them. You wouldn't listen. Bible editing. For God doth know that in the day ye thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now notice what the New American Standard says. For God knows that in the day ye eat from it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God. That is not what it says. It's not what it says. ESV says the same thing. You will be like God. That is a lie. Daniel 3.25 in the King James has the Son of God. ESV, a son of the gods. New American Standard, a son of the gods. 1 Timothy 3.16, God was manifest in the flesh. New American Standard, he who was revealed in the flesh. He was manifested in the flesh. Who? All right, I got to move on. Okay, watch, oh, watch this now. Now, remember, in the tabernacle, your DNA, the book, was kept in a building of 46 boards, right? In Solomon's temple, he had two pillars in the front, Jachin and Boaz. They were 18 cubits tall, but the chapter on top was five cubits tall. 18 plus five is? So you have 23 here and 23 here. What do you have? So in Solomon's temple, you have the, the DNA stored in a building that has 46 in it. In the second temple that was built is the one that Jesus said, oh, there it says right there, and he set up the pillars in the porch of the temple, he set up the right pillar, called the name thereof, Jacob, and he set up the left pillar and called the name thereof, Boaz, they were 23 cubits tall. Of the second temple, Jesus answered and said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, 40 and six years was this temple in building. Isn't it something? Yeah. And wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his... <laughs> Do you know what the 46th book of the Bible is? I'll give you a start. Matthew's the 40th. Do it again. Do it again. 1 Corinthians, Matthew 40, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians 46. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. 46th book of the Bible. Now, that matters. I spent months, years, looking into the secret of Freemasonry. I'm the kind of guy, if I see two people talking, I want to know what they're talking about. <laughs> I am the biggest nosy body that there is, okay? If I see a secret handshake, I want to know what that is, okay? If I see, yeah, if I see a building like this, I want to know why it was made like this. This was built in the 30s. This is the house of the Temple Lodge in Washington, D.C. Okay, now I've been in this building. I, I didn't know you could go in it. I figured they'd shoot you on sight for even knocking on the door. But they, they have the tour guide in there. They take you all through the building, show you about everything. They have a library in there of thousands and thousands of Masonic books. And I thought, man, there's no way they'd let somebody like me read those books because their secret probably is in there. You can, you can go fill out paperwork and get any book in that library and read it. 
You know why? They did not write their secret down anywhere. I read Morals and Dogma. I read the whole book because I'm going, it's in here. It's got to be in here. And it, I couldn't find it. And I was mad. I said, God, I want to know their secret. <laughs> and finally, 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 one day God said, you want to know the secret? God, that's not funny. And he said, it's in the Bible. There's only one book in the whole world that uncovers their secret. King James Bible. My uncle was a jack killing, 50 caliber, gun carrying marine soldier. And I honor him. He died a few years ago. And they buried him in his marine uniform. That marine uniform is something else. I bawled. But he was a 32nd degree Shriner Mason. And, and would not would not submit to the gospel. But this building, the architecture is, is designed, it's got two different things on it. The bottom part, the pillars, where you see the pillars, is modeled after a Greek temple. The top is modeled after a step pyramid. So you have two different ideas here. The square of the temple, Albert Pike says, relates to the plane of the earth. While the step pyramid, and are there pyramids everywhere all over the planet? There are pyramids everywhere. They're finding them in places that they don't want anybody to know, but they're finding them in Antarctica, Bosnia. The Bosnian pyramid is huge. Okay? Pyramids everywhere. You know what those are? High places. The idea is you are, you are going to the heavens to be with the gods. The gods are up here. And you are ascending to the heights to be with the gods. Just like, just like the Tower of Babel. Let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach into heaven. Okay? So the pyramid represents the heaven. And the, the Greek pillars represent the earth. And they're joined together. I want you to think about that. Heaven and earth joined together. Or what's in heaven and what's in earth fused together together. There are 33 pillars around this building to represent the 33 degrees of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. However, on the step pyramid, there are 13 steps representing the 13 uh, levels of the York Rite of Freemasonry. So add 33 to 13. 46. And inside this building, and I didn't, didn't have time to get my pictures of it, but I went inside, and they took us, and I saw two winding staircases. Now, when I see that, that's DNA. Yep. So, I'm counting the steps going up. I'm going one, two. The tour guide doesn't know it, but I'm going one, two, three, four. And I get to the top, and there's two of them. I get to the top of one, and there's 23 steps here. There's 23 steps here. So what does that building represent? Yeah. You got it? You get it? Okay. So there's the Scottish Rite with the 33 steps, and the York Rite with 13, and it all represents 46. The focus of Freemasonry is DNA. They even use... Two, two of the main signs of Freemasonry are the pillars of Jachin and Boaz. And remember, Jachin is 23, Boaz is 23. How, and the winding staircase modeled after the one that was in Solomon's temple. Why did Solomon have a winding staircase in his temple? Think about it. It's DNA. It's, that, it's the temple of God. All right? Now, however, there's something unique about the Masonic pillar, something they add to it that's not in Solomon's temple. If you'll notice on the left pillar, they have a globe of the earth. And on the right hand pillar, they have a globe of the stars. What are stars in the Bible? 
And they're both together in the 46 chromosomes. Sons of God, daughters of men. You now know the secret. You know the secret. Okay? It's all right here in the Bible. Look at this. It, even, it actually labels it. That, now, that doesn't represent Jim Beam. For some of you guys are going, hey, I don't know. <laughs> Jacob and Boaz. Notice potter on this side, modder on this side. Father, mother. Opposites. Binaries joined together. Superior, inferior. The heavens joined with the earth together. Fused together. Same on, the, on this one. On the uh, right hand side, you see Jacob and Boaz. One has a, a globe of the earth, the other has a globe of the stars, and they're fused together. And there's all kinds of Masonic symbolisms like the square and the compass. Albert Pike said that the square on the bottom is what measures the planes of things, so it represents the plane that he, he said they used to believe the earth was flat, so that represents the plane of the earth. And it represents the passive principle. It represents the female. The compass is, draws a circle, which you have the circle of the stars at night. So he said that represents the heavens and they are joined together. The heavens, the stars are, are represents the male principle, the active principle, and the, the square represents the female, the passive, and the earth, and they're joined together and the letter G is a number. What number would it be? Sing the song. A, B, C, D, E, F. Seven. The square, therefore, is a natural and appropriate symbol of this earth. The compass is an equally natural and appropriate symbol of the heavens. The compass is the hermetic symbol of the creative deity, the male, and the square, the productive earth or universe. And basically, it's the stars joining together with humans. For centuries, explorers have searched the world for the fountain of youth. Today, billionaires believe that they can create it using technology and data. I'm not going to get into all of this. This is about DNA and what they're doing with it. Uh, genetically modifying this, genetically modifying that. Take your Bible, turn to uh, uh, Genesis 6, and then Daniel 2, and we'll be done. Because I need air. Folks, don't join the lodge. Amen. Don't do it. Okay? Now, and let me just give you one, let me give you one thing. Okay? You go into that lodge, and this is common knowledge. I had a man come to me, visit our church, and he asked me if I knew anything about Freemasonry, and I said, yeah, and I was opposed to it, and he said, won't you come by the house and talk to me about it? And I did. He was, him and his wife were very receptive. And I decided not to get into all conspiracy theories and this and that and the other, how they're ruling the world. But I told him little things that I knew, like when they pray. I said, when they pray in the lodge, do they pray in Jesus' name? He said, no. And uh, he said, that, you know, it's because we, we have like Jews there and we don't want to offend them. I said, number one, the cross is an offense. Jesus is going to be an offense. And I said, you cannot pray to God without a mediator. Did you know that? You're praying without a mediator. And there's only one mediator, and it's Jesus Christ. Amen. And I said, then when you die, and they put on you that Masonic apron, it te they tell you that your apron represents your works of righteousness. And when you go stand before the architect of the universe, and he sees you wearing that apron, then he knows that, you have done righteous deeds and will be accepted into the celestial kingdom. And, and his wife said, I know they believe that. She said, I was Eastern Star and I did all the funerals and I know that that's what that represents. And I said, but we're not saved by works. We're saved by grace alone through faith and that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God. So I just gave him scripture. Okay. And then, um, what was it I told him? I don't remember. I'm tired. But anyway, uh, I can't tell you the whole story, but it turned out good, is what I'll tell you. Turned out, and God did it. God did it, okay? 
I'm just telling you, don't yoke yourselves together with unbelievers. And, and don't bow before a man called worshipful master. How many masters can you have? One. That's exactly right. Genesis 6. Ecclesiastes 1 tells us that just like the rivers run into the sea and the sea is not full and from the place that they went to, thither they return. Just as Solomon, he figured out the, the, the water cycle. He figured out that, you know, the sun rises and sets and sure enough, it comes back up again. He said, one generation passes and another is born. And he said, he followed it up by saying, the thing that hath been is that which shall be and there is no new thing under the sun. So the Bible is full of the thing that hath been. And that's what's telling you is what is going to happen. Genesis chapter 6, uh, we see, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God, and let me tell you this, you can look at every single place in the Bible where the sons of God are mentioned. You will not find Seth's name anywhere. What you'll find are angels. You'll find them in Job three times. You'll find something similar to it in uh, Psalm 82. Jesus actually quoted Psalm 82 and he said, I have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high. Sons of God. Okay? Now, back to Genesis 6. And, and in the New Testament, Guess who the sons of God are? Us. And guess what we're going to do? Shine as lights in a dark world. Like the stars of the heaven. We shall be as the stars of the heaven. Somebody say amen. amen. Isn't it cool? We're going to take their place. Get out of my house. Amen. So Genesis 6. The sons of God came into the daughters of men. And uh, so the sons of God are angels. And I'm going to show you that they have DNA. Um, they took them wives, all of which they chose. And then verse 4, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that. So people ask me, well, pastor, didn't God kill all the giants with the flood? Then how did they survive the flood? They didn't. God killed them all in the flood. But the verse says there were giants in the earth in those days before the flood. And then it says, and also after that, after the flood. These angels did it again, or a group of angels did it again. They came into the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. Those are called hybrids. Amen? So why did God say, don't mingle your vineyard with mingle, or don't sow your vineyard with mingled seed? I think God was looking at God. Of course, God knew the future. And God knew that we would not only be able to mix radish and onion seeds and everything else and throw them out there, but we would also be able to take the DNA of an onion and put it into a radish and have a radish this big. That would be cool, wouldn't it? I love radishes. We could do anything now with DNA. We can change every creature on the earth by altering its DNA. And isn't it something that the Bible says that in the days before the flood, all flesh had corrupted itself. And in the land of the giants, when the 12 spies went to the land of the giants, they came back, two guys carrying a little bitty thing of grapes on a stick, right? It was so big that two guys had to carry it in. How did it get that big? Something was going on. These giants were, are not humans. Their fathers are angels, evil angels. They have their father's DNA in them. And I believe some of them could, be, could have been as tall as 15, 20 feet, maybe even taller than that. If we took the ratio that the 12 spies gave of the grasshopper to the giant, woo, I can see how they built big stuff with big stones. Amen? Yeah. Now, turn to uh, 1 Corinthians. Mm, 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 mm. Do angels have DNA? 
First Corinthians. I love my King James. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have found none of this. If it hadn't been for this King James Bible. Look at verse... Let's start at verse 35. He's teaching about the resurrection. Some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what, what, what body do they come? Now notice that he's already talking about your resurrected body. You're going to be a spirit. Yes. Chapter 15. Chapter 15. Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. Joel. That's the sound of revival, by the way. So, verse 35, how are the dead raised up and with what body do they come? He's already telling you that spirits do have bodies. Our, our version of spirits have been formed into us by Casper the Friendly Ghost. Okay? We, we are not going to be shapeless mass, masses of air that have no form. We're not going to be that. We, uh, it's already saying we're going to have a body. A spirit body. And I'll tell you, spirit is more real than this flesh is. Just as this body is more real than my shadow is. That, I can show you that in the Bible too. But our spirit body is more real than us. Okay? So he says, verse 36, Thou fool, that which thou sowest, see he's using seed, isn't he? Is not quickened except it die. So we know that the shell must come off. This, this body must corrupt in the ground so that that which is on the inside can grow up. And what comes out of the ground doesn't look like what went into the ground, does it? But it does look like something, doesn't it? So he says in verse 37, and that, and that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain. It may chance of wheat or some other grain. Now notice verse 38, but God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him. And I want you to underline this passage to every seed, his own body. So if it has a body, it has seed. And what is the seed of our new body? The Word of God. Literally. I mean, we found out today that literally our DNA and is linked to our salvation. We found that out today. This is DNA right here. And this is what makes us sons of God. That's how we end up being in His image. Right? So, um, verse 39, all flesh is not the same flesh. Count this. There's one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, another of birds. How many? The number four represents two things. The gospel, and it represents the spiritual realm. Let me illustrate it. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, Rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. Four. And it's like that all through the Bible. That the number four represents the spiritual realm. New Jerusalem in heaven. City built how? Four square. Okay? And it's not like any temple on this earth. So watch this. Verse 40. There are also celestial what? There you go. Celestial is the heavens and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. This is why we don't shine as bright as the sun does or as the stars do. But one of these days we will. God will glorify us and we will shine. Amen. Amen. So right here you've just learned that celestial bodies have DNA. You just learned that. Okay? Now, the secret of Freemasonry. Daniel chapter 2. And I'm done. Unless you can think of something else you want me to talk about for another hour. So God said, Mike, just look for the word secret. And I did. And I started at the beginning and I read every verse 
with the word secret. And you know what? I didn't miss TV that day. I didn't miss watching TV at all that day. I had a good time. What do we say the number four represents? Spiritual kingdom, spiritual world. Okay? Uh, remember in Daniel 7, how many beasts did he see? Remember the principle that if you have four things, if you read Daniel 7, you'll see that the fourth beast is diverse from the other three. Isn't that something? And of course, Nebuchadnezzar sees the fourth. It's like the Son of God. And see, he's, he's in a different realm, isn't he? Because, and the men with him are in a different realm because not even the smoke was on their clothing. Woohoohoo! All right, now watch this. So here's the secret. Um, in ver he's, he's talking about the, uh, the image. Verse 31, behold, thou king, thou behold a great image. Um, verse 32, the image head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and thighs of brass, his legs of iron. Notice that at the top, it's expensive and it's getting cheaper as it goes down. Yeah. And then it ends up with dirt. Cheaper than iron. It's hard to sell dirt, isn't it? Well, unless it's real estate. Then it's easy, okay? But anyway, thou sawest till, uh, his legs of iron, his feet, part of iron, part of clay. Now look in verse 40. And the fourth kingdom. Now, I've read a lot of scholars. I've read a lot of books. Everybody says, now this is the revived Roman Empire. I don't think so. Now, you can disagree. I'll respect your disagreement. I'll just ask you to put your books down and get your Bible out. That's what I'll ask you to do. Okay? Because this kingdom is not from here. It is. It is principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. Or in the high places. Okay? Because they did spiritual wickedness in all the high places, didn't they? Okay? Now, and the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. Now what did Jesus say about a kingdom divided against itself? Shall not what? What is this image doing right now? But what is it going to do? Why? It's divided. The weakness is in trying to uh, mingle the iron with the clay. And it doesn't work. Does it? But there shall be in it the strength of iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. And as the toes of the feet, how many toes? Ten is for dominion. How many, how many laws, how many commandments? Paul said in Romans 7, Doth not the law have dominion over a man as long as he liveth? So God told Joshua, Every place the soles of your feet touch, that I, I shall give it to thee. He has dominion over the... Your ground is your ground. Amen? Stand your ground. So anyway, that's the number 10. It represents dominion. So 10 toes. And it, by the way, it represents the law. And Christ came. And he's the stone cut without hands. Because no man made Jesus. Amen? He's the stone cut without hands. And when he gets ready to destroy all of the kingdoms, he doesn't, head, he doesn't aim for the head, doesn't aim for the chest, not the knees. He goes right for the ten toes. And it falls. Christ came to destroy the power of the law, didn't he? So it says, verse 43, Whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. That's it right there. That's the secret. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Every Masonic symbol. Every Masonic symbol. Every Masonic handshake. Every Masonic temple. The way they sit. The way they cross their legs. I'm telling you, Masons have symbols everywhere. And every one of them represent they 
shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. A kingdom ruled from the inside of man. Let me give you one more verse. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Okay? Oh, I got to read it because I can't remember it. I think I need two men to hold my arms up. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And then I'll leave here. That you be not, verse 2, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, is at the day of Christ's hand. Now let me ask you a question and set you up for this. What is the temple of God? What is the temple of God? Our bodies. What is the temple of God? What is the real temple of God? Our bodies. Does God dwell in temples made with hands? So what is the temple of God? Say it. Say it louder. Verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he is God, finish it. Where is he? Where's, where's Christ right now? In us. In the word, in our heart. Where's the man of sin going to be? In the temple of God. Uh, listen, you study it out. The only, the only biblical interpretation of the temple of God, especially in the New Testament, is the body. I like you. You need to come move to Festus and... You want this? <laughs> ah, I bet. I know I've given you a lot. Let me, let me just do this. Oh, good grief. Any questions? Okay. One, I'll take one question. One good question. Anybody? Yes, sir. Well, I was just seeing about uh, studying about the AI and the chat, GPT, uh, not chat, but GPT-4 and then 5 is going to be coming out and then AGI, which is Artificial General Intelligence. And supposedly, I've seen some videos, I don't know if you can verify this, but actually they can already read, the algorithms can already read and interpret your brain, what you're thinking, and it can read your mind if you're in front of it. So it's already, that we're not already even protected anymore necessarily by our skin and by our, our body. How many times have you sat down to type something in Google and Google already had it almost typed out for you? Raise your hand. Okay, here's what I, here's what I believe. I believe that the artificial intelligence is so advanced that it predicts our behavior just like mothers know their children. And when your children lie to you, you're going, uh-uh, you're lying to me. Right? You know them? Okay? I think, the, I think the AI is so advanced, it predicts our behavior almost every time we use it. And every time it makes a mistake, it learns from it and doesn't repeat it. That's what I think. Okay, Father in heaven, I love you. I thank you, Lord, for these people. They're so good and generous and, and uh, me taking up all their time. I thank you for Pastor Reg and his friendship and fellowship over the years. And Lord, he's taught me so much. And the things that he's been through, Father, I, I, you, you brought me through it. And it, it helped me. It helped me that I know that my brother went through it too. And I thank you, Lord, for the knowledge that you've given us today and the, just the beauty of the Word of God that we hold. I can't, I can't get over it. I thank you, Father, for it. I pray, God, that you would continue to bless your Word in these people's hearts. May they find things, Father, that I'll never see because they now have a love for the truth of the Word of God. Bless us, Father. Protect us from all things that are coming. We pray in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen, Amen Brother Edge.